like to bespeak my achievements I've sketched and furthermore share my future oriented perspectives on this graphene application for OLED display. Hope that this talk can contribute in engraving a better cornerstone within this resplendent graphene and OLED science. Uh, OLED science. This slide shows the contents of my presentation. I will mention why OLED display, graphene application area, graphene synthesis, graphene encapsulation, graphene electrode, and conclusion in order. Okay, let's begin with why we have chosen OLED for graphene application. Comparing LCD with, with OLED, OLED display has an enhanced ability in displaying perfect black images, vivid colors, and wide viewing angles. And also, OLED displays are thin, light, and bright because they don't need to use a bad light at all. And also, also OLED has, a, has rollable, bendable, and foldable characteristics compared with LCD having no possibility for implementation of these appealing features. That's why we have chosen OLED as a platform of implementing graphene materials. This slide shows the summary of our opinion on graphene application area for OLED display. Graphene could be a promising material for OLED due to its interesting material properties, such as electrical optical properties, barrier properties, high mobility, mechanical properties, and thermal properties. In particular, the fact that it has relatively low sheet resistance and flexible and stretchable mechanical property, properties simultaneously, and the barrier properties that can block all kinds of molecules are thought to have great application potential. There can be four major areas of application of graphene to OLED, such as OLED anode cathode electrode, OLED encapsulation, and heat sink and new light source. In this course, I'd like to present the results of graphene OLED encapsulation and graphene OLED electrode among them. In case of graphene synthesis, we've developed row to row synthesis by applying tension controlled single crystallization of kappa foils with vertical directions in collaboration with Seoul National University. Uh, through the vertical tension controlled growth for high quality seaweed graphene, we were able to minimize lattice mismatch between copper and graphene and obtained high quality mono multi layer graphene, which has lower layer defects. By using graphene with improved quality in this way, I've developed the seaweed graphene film lamination process, which is currently available for OLED panel production. Specifically, after synthesizing graphene on copper texture surface with vertical direction, we make transparent base film and pressure sensitive adhesive hybrid film as a transferring media. After copper wet etching, we laminate base film, pressure sensitive adhesive, graphene hybrid film onto targeted OLED device in vacuum atmosphere. This process can be directly applied to the currently used OLED display manufacturing process because of its simplicity and process adaptability. We have published the related article on vertical synthesis of, of graphene for high quality to 2D materials journal in collaboration with uh, Seoul National University. In case of, <clears throat> in case of graphene encapsulation for OLED display, OLED encapsulation currently used in products has no choice but to use a method in which several multi layers delay external moisture penetration in order to pre prevent oxidation of, of, the, of the OLED electrode and the light emitting material. This is so called the moisture retarda retardation mechanism. The reason is because the size of water molecules in the gaseous state is so small that the alternating organic and inorganic layers used in OLED displays cannot block this small molecular size. However, interestingly, graphene has the distance between nearest car carbon items with a value of 0.14 Armstrong, which is smaller than the size of other molecules, such as helium, oxygen, and H2O. And also, since uh, graphene has a very thin and flexible properties, it is very clear that graphene materials will be the best OLED encapsulation material 
if the graphene quality is almost perfect. This slide shows the importance of OLED encapsulation. OLED has a structure that is vulnerable to moisture in the gaseous state. So when the upper layer of graphene OLED device is exposed to external moisture or oxygen, pixel shrinkage occurs in which the light emitting area is reduced where a dark spot non-emission area is created in the light, emi light emitting area. The role of encapsulation prevents the oxidation of light emitting materials and electrode materials by blocking moisture and oxygen flowing in from the outside of the device. And also it serves as a mechanism to protect the device from applied mechanical and physical impact. If the performance of OLED encapsulation is bad, as shown in the picture, a lot of dark spots are generated and it cannot be used as a defective product. This slide shows a flexible OLED lighting device with graphene film encapsulation. We've used the combination of two layers of graphene and inorganic silicon nitride passivation layer as an encapsulation structure to realize this flexible OLED lighting device. This slide shows a smartphone with graphene encapsulation, graphene film encapsulation. This is for the first time in the world. Through this result, we can confirm that graphene can contribute to performance enhancement of the inorganic silicon nitride passivation layer as an encapsulation structure. This slide explains why we are working on graphene encapsulation development. The phase seal and TFE alternately stack organic and inorganic layers without empty spaces in the encapsulation structure. The inorganic layer contributes to the, to the improvement of barrier performance and the organic layer, layer plays a, as a role in relieving the stress applied to the film while planarizing the device structure. The difference between the, these two structures is that in case of the phase seal, the thickness of the organic film is created to planalize the particles generated during the process. Phase seal and TFE has disadvantages, such as an increase in manufacturing cost due to multi-layer stacking, deterioration of inorganic layer performance, due to low temperature under 100 centigrade silicon nitride passivation and generational particles in the process. On the other hand, graphene encapsulation has obvious advantages such as simple fabrication, ultra thin structure and foldability. Graphene encapsulation can dramatically cut the process step and thickness of OLED display. We've developed the hybrid encapsulation structure with the combined layers of inorganic and graphene materials because the performance of graphene is not yet enough. WVTR, water vapor transmission rate, has been widely used as a quantitative measure of barrier property. In order to apply the encapsulation structure to the OLED display, a single layer or multi-layer film of about 10 to minus 6 is required. This value is equivalent to passing only one drop of water for a day in the area of Camp Nou, Barcelona's soccer home, home stadium. We've achieved 10 to minus 5 WVTR with a combination of two layers of graphene and silicon nitride, nitride inorganic passivation layers. The role of graphene in the encapsulation structure can be explained as follows. Since all OLED emitting material deteriorate at temperatures above 100 centigrade, PCB, PCVD inorganic passivation layers that can only, made, only be made at temperatures below 100 centigrade definitely have my, many micro cracks and pinholes, which has the possibility to lead to the path of moisture permeation. If we transfer monolayer of graphene, one layer of graphene covers some of micro cracks and pinholes, but 
there are also portions where the grain boundary of one layer of graphene overlaps the micro pinholes and cracks, which leads to insufficient encapsulation performance. If we transfer two layers of graphene, non-overlapping grain boundaries of two layers of graphene cover micro pinholes and cracks more. If we transfer three, three or more layers of graphene, non-overlapping grain boundaries of three layers of graphene cover micro pinholes and cracks more and more. In OLED display, transmittance is also a very important factor, so we implemented two or three layers of graphene. In order to enhance the WVTR of graphene, graphene's film quality and impurity particle control during, during graphene film synthesis and the lamination process needs to be improved up to the commercialization level. The decolorization of paintings, photographs, and artworks is a common phenomenon related to the oxidative degradation of color dyes reacting with oxygen and water molecules. We reported the dry transfer coating of the graphene barrier films on flexible substrate at room temperature using a roll-to-roll -roll process to prevent the bleaching of color dyes, which can be widely used to protect various colorization and light emitting materials uh, in collaboration with Seoul National University. Okay, let's change the subject to graphene electrode for OLED display. In case of graphene electrode for OLED display, this slide shows 19 inch OLED display with graphene anode electrode. We've demonstrated the applicability of graphene to OLED anode electrode through the National Project of Republic of Korea in collaboration with these companies shown on the screen, including ETRI. This slide shows graphene pixel wheel pattern by using photolithography and electrical property of 19-inch OLED display with CVD graphene anode electrode. This slide represents the electrode fabrication process of the demonstrated 19-inch OLED display. The process sequence is polyimide film formation, silicon nitride silicon ox dioxide passivation layer deposition, formation of metal addressing line, contact hole formation, graphene transfer and photolithography for pixel formation, OLED device fabrication and thin film encapsulation, and laser lift up process for flexibility. These processes uh, for graphene electrode can be applied to the current OLED manufacturing process. This slide shows a fabrication scheme to make graphene pixel pattern. The process sequence is a substrate loading, spin coating of photoregist, UV exposure, photoregist development, and reactive ion etching and pixel pattern inspection. These processes for graphene electrode can be also applied to the current OLED manufacturing process. This slide explains why we have chosen and developed graphene as an OLED electrode. Graphene shows uh, computative properties of transparency and sheet resistance and superior properties such as uh, failure strain and transmittance, uh, thermal conductivity and mobility. In addition, since graphene has stable electrical properties, even if it is stretched to a certain extent, it has the potential to be applied to stretchable OLED electrode. Materials other than graphene are not stable when stretched. Then for this reason, graphene has, high, has a high potential for being used in stretchable OLED display electrodes. Okay, let me condense my main points of this lecture shortly. To begin with, we proved the possibility of graphene material as OLED encapsulation through the National Project of Republic of Korea. Graphene has a potential of application for next-generation OLED encapsulation due to its unique mechanical flexibility combined with barrier property. Furthermore, we have demonstrated the potential of graphene material as OLED anode electrode 
through the national project of Republic of Korea. Considering this pioneering, pioneering process of defining the application of graphene in OLED display, I believe this demonstration itself will function as a foundation for developing this graphene and OLED science, one step ahead for sure. Lastly, for real commercialization of graphene into OLED displays, I also found graphene, must, 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 graphene material must overleap some critical hurdles, such as graphene's quality after transfer, poor addition, impurity control of graphene film fabrication, and higher sheet resistance. Since these elements remain as an unserved quest that the graphene science world should reflect about, I hope that these lectures being held in IAAM will function as a groundwork in setting a more distant view for this kind of future enhanced science. And I, as an individual serving as a scientist as well, will focus on designing this graphene and OLED field more mature for full bloom as well. If you have any appropriate materials or good ideas on enhancing these graphene's material, material properties for display application, feel free to contact me. We welcome evaluating your materials and discuss your idea with open mind. This is my contact information. Thank you for your cherishable listening.